Hello, I'm Jamie and for this short video I'm joined by Pete Carr from the RSPB Fanit Local Group. Hello Pete. Good morning. How are you Jamie? I, I'm very good. How are you and how's Fanit? Fanit's hot and steamy and thundery at the moment. I think we had four <laughs> inches of rain last night uh, which the ground really needed but yes. it's a great place to be. Same here in Bedfordshire and, and, and I was just saying before I hit the record button I know Thanet quite well so it's, yeah, it's a great pleasure to be talking about somewhere I, I grew up and is one of you know some of these places are my own old birding haunts so I should, should say that in this short video Pete and I are going to be chatting about some of the places that you can go in and around that part of Kent and some of the real kind of birding hotspots um, so well, let's begin with um, I suppose the top three places, and we can go into them in a bit more detail, but what would you say are your favourite spots where you can travel too easily from where you are? Oh, that's a difficult question to start with. Um, first of all, it's nice to take you on, on a trip down memory lane. My top three places. Well, I actually live in North Portland, right by the lighthouse. So I'm guessing my top spot locally is, is North Portland itself. It's a headland, it's great for migration, uh, turns up the odd rarity and I can walk out of my back door uh, and I don't have to get, get in a car. So probably number one, North Portland. Of course, I think it's the largest bit of woodland left in Kent is uh, RSPB, Green Woods. Um, and it's a wonderful bit of native habitat that's probably the best place in Kent to see species like lesser spotted woodpeckers still. Um, where else? And the recently created Lydon Valley, uh, Worth Marshes, Lydon Valley, it's another RSPB site. Um, it's very well watched by some very expert bird watchers and that turns up some pretty good rarities too. But I think I'll just make one more plug if I may, if I may Jamie, there's a place called Minster Sewage Farm. And as every bird watcher knows, sewage farms are just remarkable for birds. And I spent five years growing up in Minster as a lad, and I know it's great. So it sounds yeah, like, yeah. because of where you are, that it's a really good sort of migratory hotspot. And you must find that, I guess, with the sewage works and with the kind of the sea watching on the coast. So is there a particularly good time of year that you would go out to some of these places and, and look out for uh, migratory species? Oh, for sure. So spring has probably just spring migration here on north Portland has probably just about ended there's no more species trickling through but every morning even in my garden here on north Portland, there's things like red starts and black red starts been turning up pied fly catchers so sea watching in spring on north Portland isn't fantastic but come autumn if i sit up by the lighthouse looking out to see with my telescope i can expect to see numbers of skewers and divers and terns passing. So both spring and autumn, prime time for migration and North Portland, a great place to watch it. And um, the sewage works, um, obviously a fascinating one as well. It's a good stop off point. point. Um, and I'm guessing that we as birders go to these places because it's warm, there's lots of insects, um, bringing in all the kind of species that are gonna be looking for that kind of food. Um, what about kind of late summer, early autumn? What kind of things might you see at the sewage works, Minster Sewage Works? Um, well, Minster Sewage Works, I, I sort of relate this as like a McDonald's for birds. If you walk round on a, on a warm late summer evening, there are clouds and clouds of insects. So any insectivorous species, personally, I was hoping to be seeing things like spotted fly catchers, pied fly catchers. Red starts, certainly, uh, and a suite of uh, warblers. For those who like rarities, late summer of last year, I found a dusky warbler uh, at Minster Sewage Farm. Fantastic. And where would that have come from? Dusky warblers, they're sort of um, Eastern Palearctic, Eastern Europe, Northeastern Europe. Uh, they're not super rarities, but it was a great year for them last year. I think there was at least 10 at one time in, in the UK, which Goodness. is probably more than ever. That's, that's incredible. Um, so thinking about visiting somewhere like Minster Sewage Works, is it, is it quite easy to get to by public transport, by car? Uh, the train station is actually at the bottom of the sewage farm road. So that, oh, and perfect. it's probably best to get the public transport to Minster Sewage Farm because parking, um, a bit like Lydon Valley RSPB is quite hard work there. Unlike RSPB Bleen, where there's plenty of parking. But yeah, uh, there's a train station at the bottom and then there's a, about a 
kilometre and a half walk to the sewage farm gates. And then there's a trail that goes all the way around the outside through the clouds of insects and clouds of birds. Bleenwoods is uh, probably one of my favourite places in the area. Can you tell us a bit about what you've seen there? Uh, Bleenwoods is always on my list of places to go uh, in, in a birding year. The reason being, I think it's got the healthiest population of lesser spotted woodpeckers, which are, are declining and hard to see species. But if you go to Bleenwoods before the trees are green over, you're fairly guaranteed to see lesser spotted woodpecker. And, and that's one species I have seen. Other great birds that are, are just typical old ancient woodland species, such as marsh tits, nuthatch, tree creepers, obviously great spotted and green woodpeckers. There's a suite of birds of prey that nest in the Bleen Woods area. Um, some of them very, very rare, but there's also things like sparrow hawks and common buzzard that breed in Bleen Woods. Um, and, it, and it's more than just birds at Bleen Woods. There's some incredible butterflies still there um, and, and a whole suite of plants. I don't claim to be a, a botanist, but I know mm -hmm. from walking with other group members, they've been pointing out plants that they've been very excited about. So uh, let's talk a bit about stub marsh because I remember, I think it's a national nature reserve stub marsh. If I'm I think it is, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, I remember seeing my first marsh harriers there and uh, a yeah, great grey shrike, too. probably 1988, 89. Um, so again, that's an interesting little stop off point for birds that have made it, made it inland a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, stub marsh is, it, it must be one of the most famous reserves in, in Britain. Um, it was the site where uh, Chetty's warblers first colonised. Um, like you, I saw my first marsh harrier at Stodmarsh. I saw my first bitterns at Stodmarsh. Um, and the entire Stour Valley, I believe, is the largest uh, reed bed uh, in Kent. It, it's a wonderful, flat, well-managed walk where I would think you would be fairly guaranteed to see 60, at least 60 species on a, on a walk around the reserve. Um, plenty of parking across the road in the, in the Red Lion pub. It's, it's pay parking, but there's plenty of it. Uh, and, and it's just a beautiful walk, any time of day as well. Er, early morning, you'll get all the birds song. If you go at this time of year, uh, in the late afternoon, you'll have mm, 10 to 20 hobbies feeding on dragonflies around the reserves. The bitterns are still booming there. And, it, and it's, a, it's a real gem of the Kent Reserve, that one. So there's quite a few places that we would recommend. You can obviously have a little birding holiday down in that part of Kent. You've got Bleen, oh, Bleen Woods. You've got, the, you've got Minster Sewage Farm. You've got Stob Marsh. You've got those places on the coast we've referred to. And, and I was thinking Pegwell Bay as well, somewhere I used to, I, I used to go to. I don't know if you've visited that too. Uh, Pegwell Bay is once every week minimum for me. Uh, there's a there's a really nice hide down there uh, that is open again now that overlooks when the tide is coming in. All the waders congregate in this little area in front of the uh, the hide there, and again you can see fifty to sixty species. Uh, Pegwell Bay very famous for its rarities that it turns up. It's one of the more reliable places for things like Kentish plovers, um, spoonbills always there. This year already, I've seen white stork and white-tailed eagle um, from that from the area of the hide. Uh, and again, there's plenty of park in there. Uh, there's there's even a place to have tea and coffee uh, and and a sandwich yeah. down there in a nice picnic area. So yeah, it, it's it's a great place, very famous place, uh, and it's easy to walk around, well signposted and well routed. I think the other one we must mention when we're talking about Kent is RSPB Dungeness. Of course. So for any, for anyone who's interested in rarities, Dungeness is, you, you will visit Dungeness at least two or three times a year for one of the super rarities that has turned up. And at this moment, at this very moment, there's a bird called a collared pratting hole um, mocking about down there, which quite a few of us Kent listers have, have uh, already been down to see. And th those, where would they have come from, the colour pratting girls? Uh, again, they're Southern European. I think there's breeding colonies in uh, Ebros Delta and Cota Dunyana would be the closest ones. But again, they're not common. And, and I think there were three at one time at Dungeness, which is 
incredible. And they're stunning, stunning looking birds. How has the group kept going over lockdown? What have you been doing? Well, I, I think RSPB Thanet has done a remarkable job over lockdown. Um, because people couldn't meet, same as uh, lots of other organisations, they went into virtual mode. And over the period of the lockdown, they've been having coffee mornings. Uh, every Thursday morning, they were having coffee mornings for half an hour where people would get together and talk. Um, uh, they ran a identi identification course for beginners uh, on, on virtual. I think there were eight parts to it and it cost something ridiculous like five pounds for eight lessons in bird, in bird identification all proceeds going to the RSPB. Uh, and they have a very, very healthy WhatsApp group. I can't remember the exact figure, but I think it's something like there's 160 folk on this WhatsApp group. And, and, and to me, RSPB Thanet, and, and probably all local groups, not just Thanet, it, it's more than a group of people interested in bird watching. And we found out more and more over the lockdown, uh, that it's actually a community that you belong to with these groups. Um, you know, and people were looking out for each other and talking to each other. And when you couldn't meet, these virtual meetings were, were really important for lots of people. And it's, it's, it's been a real power of strength. And, and I can't think of the right word, but, but something that helped us get through a particularly trying time. What does it mean for you personally to be part of something like this? Like you said, it's a community, isn't it? Uh, it, it is a community, and um, I, I count myself quite fortunate that I've been bird watching all my life, and, uh, and I think I'm okay at um, identifying birds. Uh, I've just completed a PhD in, in birds, so I feel I can contribute. And, and lots of people are on our WhatsApp group, for example, people are always putting photographs up of stuff that's occurring in their gardens or when we're on a walk today. And yeah, and I, I like to contribute. I, you know, I like to contribute to conservation. But what I've found in, in a local group is I'm actually contributing towards people as well, which is um, that's just a really nice thing to do. So yeah, it, 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 it means a lot to me. And, and the one down here is, is fabulous. It's really strongly supported and well run. Fantastic stuff. Um, well, thank you, Pete. That's been absolutely fascinating and hopefully would have inspired a few people to come down and visit Thanet and maybe join their local groups. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.